Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and to a card of a deck profile. In this video we're going to be covering, as you can tell by the map, Night Rose post set 14 with the inclusion of the new Roseate Stride. Roseate is a very good card and something that this deck has desperately needed. However, it's unfortunately not enough at this point. If this came out in set 13, I feel like this actually would have been enough to put Night Rose back into tier 1 and as a legitimate counter deck to Overlord. But now in set 13 format where we've got things like Gear Chronicle, Nubatama, Dark uh, DI, Regalia, and in addition to the already present Victor, the leader, and what's another? Uh, what's another one of those kind of type of decks? Uh, right, Nasiel Gize, I guess. Yeah, Nasiel Gize could actually be a problem for this matchup, but in any case, like against those decks, it's going to be difficult to get your wins against them because they have, in some of these decks cases, they have a much better early game and we still don't really have much of one however standard will change that as grand will be getting cards to actually do things pre-stride which is something i've been wanting for quite a bit and basker's already been confirmed to be our vr of the upcoming set and we are going to be for some reason protect which is okay i guess well i, I, I suppose the reasoning that they're giving us protect is because grand blue mills therefore we lose out on perfect guards so riding a protect grade three will give us perfect guards to work with and you know what that's fine and it also gets around guard restricting so the whole issue i mentioned with di just kind of goes away after that but um yeah i'm curious to see what else we'll get on that set i'm predicting that we'll get kokaitis as the grade three triple bear and the grade two triple bear will be night mist and then we'll probably see retrains of king serpent um captain night kid see uh rough seas banshee chappy the ghosty yeah, like it's, it's going to be a fun time. So whatever issues I have with this deck will hopefully be cleared up by the time Premium Standard comes around, so August. And with that being said, let's dive right into this. So the core deck hasn't really changed a whole lot. I mean, it's been over a year since we've gotten core support. So it's just a matter of like uh, adjusting the deck for your relative format. Like if you have a Link Joker heavy format, then you can run Pawcores. If you don't play against Link Joker, then you can run cards and other cards instead. So... Uh, I'm running the four basic Night Rose and one of the Starlight Night Rose. In addition to that, one Night Storm and one of the Promo Whale. So, Big Whale here has the ability to get really big. GB1 when it attacks a Vanguard while hollowed, it gets a plus additional 1,000 power for every two cards in the drop zone. However, the trade-off to this is that if you have five or less cards in your drop zone as a whole, he gets minus 5,000 power. You know, minus 3,000 power, so it becomes a 9, but it's just a really big beat stick that you can call off of your mass call plays, and you can also just have Night Storm call it out to end some of your attack strings with. Then for the great 2s, 4 Negro Lazy, 3 Cannoneer, 2 Brook, and 2 King Serpent. Not much else I can say about that. Uh, one thing to note is that because we will have more Night Rose strides to work with now, both Rose 8 and phantasm negro lazy can still be used to some extent in standard for premium format because you can just go into any of your night roast rides and turn them on that way then for the great ones four seawall banshee and one gus Jin. now that we're less reliant on granite go watch to make our plays you actually have the soul to use this card's ability to recur itself back to hand which is good because we're at a point where you need to be having perfect cards as much as you can so i'll trade away the counter blast management that Water Spout Jin gives me in exchange for being able to just have more PGs when I need them. And then four Stride Fodder, three Negro Bone, two Bale of the Ghosty. This could honestly go to three, and I might try that at some point. One Chap of the Ghosty, deck filtering is deck filtering. And lastly, one Shadow Element Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin skill is when it's placed on Vanguard and your opponent's Vanguard is attacked two or more times this turn you nullify whatever attacks coming at you so it's basically a perfect guard against any deck that has re-standers so gear chronicle kagero and nova grappler come to mind nova grappler not so much at the moment but give it some time and they'll probably start using victoplasma over but like against decks like yeah overlord or gear chronicle you can use this to nullify their second vanguard swing or any rear guard attack they make after that second vanguard swing because that's how this guy works so you can use this against ziegenberg's second attack or you can use it on the hall and they've been stacking all the triggers on after that second Ziegenberg swing. And because it's a normal unit and because it's a card you can pull out of the drop zone, you can use your 1G guard and you bring this back. So it's more perfect guards against decks with that can meet the conditions. Then for the triggers, 
We've got eight crits. This is probably gonna be the one that I cut in favor of the 15k crit, because even though C will ban Rough C's Banshee is probably gonna get a retrain in standard format, it probably will not go into the soul to let you draw, and that's still I feel a very important part of the card. So I'll probably run this Banshee instead and run just a vanilla crit here. Hopefully we will get a crit out of that set because they ain't giving us stands. They're probably going to give us draws. Granted, if the draws end up being perfect cards, I might consider running them. I don't know. Depends on how mill heavy the new stuff will be. And then, speaking of stands, for Screaming and one Mick the Ghosty, who is still on the ban list for some reason. You unrestrict Odysseus and put Barkle back, but you left this play? What? That is, that's, that's not right. And then... Four of the heals we currently have. I do know that we are getting effect heals at some point. There will be a promo package though, so who knows when we'll get them over here. Probably as box toppers. And one Grenache, because he is the, still the best starter we got. On to the G zone. This is actually, we'll skip her for a second. We'll go into your first ride most of the time, which is Go Watch. We know what he does. He builds a board. If you aren't going to this first ride, it's because you probably went first in G Garden. In that case, the other stride's a bit better. And you can save this guy for. A longer game state but this is mainly used to just to get your key cards out of soul so that you can get access to things that you wrote early such as skeleton cannoneer or negro lazy or negro bone and then four copies of the new stride rose 8 night rose so rose 8 skill is kind of a one persona flip and for every face up card in your g zone plus one you call a unit from drop zone to rear guard as hollowed if you call three or more cards this way she gets a crit and the other skill is at the beginning of your battle phase for every Night Rose you have in Drop Zone, you choose one of your units and it gets power plus 5,000. This doesn't like stack, so if you somehow had like 10 Night Rose in Drop Zone, or rather, I don't know, I mean, if you had an 8 Night Rose in Drop Zone, you can't be like 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 more. No. Like, so, it, it's a thing, like, it allows your comms to hit for another stage, which is nice, and the, the random crit means that. Your opponent can't just really no guard this at three damage because you might flip a crit and they die. And at, as on second stride onwards, it basically builds you a full board or pretty much close to a full board. Four cards and then five. And after that, you just try and kill your opponent with your finisher strides. But it's a very good mid game stride, something that this deck needed. And my only real complaint is that she doesn't like do this in battle phase. But I know that's asking for a whole lot. I was kind of hoping that when I saw Harry be able to like suck up to and call to, and then Harry builds a full blown battle phase, I was kind of hoping Night Rose could do the same too. But alas, not quite to be. But I guess I could go back to running um, Phantasm Night Rose for that. But the other important thing about this card is that it is a Night Rose Vanguard, so it will turn on your Night Rose Rear Guards which is going to be relevant in the future when you're riding Basker to get those protect, protect gifts. Then, two copies of Negro Songer. If you have a Megiddo, then you can honestly cut these cards for a Megiddo and a Dragut, but I didn't want to drop the money on Megiddo, so I'm not playing it. This guy is still not that bad of a card. It allows you to call a thing in battle phase at a huge power level, so you can call Night Storm, make it big, and then Night Storm attacks, and he calls the Whale, and the Whale swings, and it's also big. So that is a thing. And one King, uh, one King Boo, and one GB8. And then for the running it out, one Sabreeze, and then for the G Guards, two Negro Nrola, two Negro Lily, and one Ogleam for hand filtering. So. That is the deck in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is this deck has been a blast to play for the past year and a half. Like, if you told me that Grand Blue would end up being one of my favorite clients to play in Vanguard, I would have called you crazy because Grand Blue for a very long time was just so bad. It was overcosted and underwhelming, and the Bush Road just took their heads out of their asses and decided, you know what? We're going to give these guys good skills and good setup, and here we are. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they do things in the V series, because again, we've got Baskirk confirmed as the VR, and Baskirk's Mega Blast was one of the best ones out there, honestly. Like, if you have you gone back and read Baskirk? Holy shit, he calls a board! In order to do that now, we need either a GB8 or this thing to have four face-up and G's on the work with. <laughs> so, I'm hoping that we have some form of that. It'll probably be if you have five damage, you can discard your hand to call a board. That'll kind of suck. So I'm hoping it's not like that. Maybe he'll just be 
uh, Cannabis 1, discard a card, call 3 from drop. I would be totally fine with that. And the important thing is though, the V series is going to give this card, this deck, cards to work with going first. And probably some good utility cards too. Like if you have, I don't know, X card amount of cards in drop zone, this thing gets big. So we could probably cut Negger Rook, the Big Whale, and... Uh, what I would cut from the grade one like it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of convincing to make me want to cut well I could probably cut Bale the Ghosty and maybe maybe Negro Bone depending on how things go uh, the perfect guards are probably gonna stay that being said uh, what interesting thing is though, if we do get the draw trick of perfect guard this means that Negro and Rola could call out two perfect guards to just super no hit a thing like Suppose, for instance, we get a, a, null, a perfect guard draw trigger. You could use Negronola to call up one perfect guard from drop zone as your grade one, and then another perfect guard from drop zone as your grade two. You discard two cards from your hand, but it basically says that DP needs to hit two grade threes to break through this. And the question is, are they that Zaki? Probably, if they are living the life of a DP player, but it's just a thought right there. It's like, so... Those are some quick observations I've noticed. Um, I don't know if I would cut Grenache though as a starter because that counter charge is just too good. But in any case, that's all for now. Uh, Grand Blue players out there, give me your thoughts. What do you What do you think about Night Rose right now? Are you with? Are do you share my sentiment that this deck could be better if it had like the necessary cards, or are you fine with things as they are right now? And what are you looking forward to out of this upcoming set? Like I said before, I'm looking forward to seeing what Baskirk can do, and I'm hoping that we'll get Kokaitis, Monster Frank, and Night Mist, among them, other things. And um, we'll just see where they go from there. Like, I'm hoping that Grand Blue doesn't end up being the, the neglected clan of that set, because it is in the same set as Kidani's favorite, Aqua Force, and DP, granted. DP's support has always been here to miss, but if they're actually going to limit Laurel on that set, maybe they're serious about making DP good. I'm just hoping that what Grand Blue gets out of that set is on the same quality level as Royal Paladin has gotten out of their recent stuff. So that's all for now. As for what you can expect next on the channel, well, I finally managed to get that Harry deck I was talking about. However, I don't have everything I need for it yet, and I'm still in the process of learning how to play this deck well, but... Uh, Give it some time and I will eventually have Harry for you guys. So that's something to look forward to. Then after that, I'm pretty much done with decks for the time being. And then we're just waiting on VBT1 stuff to come in and just start doing that. Uh, out of that set, I'm looking to be building Oracle Think Tank and Nova Grappler. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, this is Blue Star 89, jacking out.